All right, cool. So we are live. It's our June 8th call. And this is, I think it's going to be the last part of the social media series. Next week, I think what I'll do is like a closing video, um, which goes into play with all of this. We did the same call like a probably a year plus ago about how to actually like ask questions of people or when people say they want more info, how do you actually have the conversation with them and then like close the sale, if you will. Um, and I think that's an important kind of thing to put on the end of this. But if you have any other questions about the social media series, just feel free to DM me or post them in the team page. And I will like try to do a wrap up, if you will, when I do that closing call. Um, but today what I wanted to do is show you kind of how to put everything into practice. So um, now we have gone through like how you set up your pages, what sort of social media form you're going to be using. Um, if you're going to just use one or multiple ones, how you actually like plan content out for your pages, how you post in stories, how you post on your feed, how you grow your network. And these are all things that like separately can be overwhelming and you know, you could put a lot of time into, but I wanted to show you kind of like how, if you were going to sit down and work your business for an hour a day, which is kind of what Beachbody recommends, um, when they say what a power hour is, like you put an hour into it. Um, if you look at the success club tracker, it's obviously going to take more time than an actual hour if you put their timing together. So I wanted to kind of show you like the most important activities that you could do in an hour and have us actually do some of them. Um, because I think that now that you've learned everything, it's time to take action. And this is honestly what produces income for this business. So first things first, when you are going to sit down to do like a power hour and you don't have to sit down and do it all at once. Like Working professionals often cannot do this in an hour of like solid time. They have to kind of break it up throughout the day. But I think what you have to know either way is what your goal is when you get started. And I like to look and see like what the month is going to bring, if you will, because I know that I have certain goals for each month in the business and Beachbody's like months are calendar months. So June 15th, um, our team has a three day refresh and a 21 day ultimate reset group starting. Obviously, you could still invite to that, but people will not have it on time to start because of the shipping delays. That being said, you can still invite to it. I think it's totally fine. Like everything's on sale. There will be people who prefer to have it for like post 4th of July. There might be somebody who wants to do it before 4th of July. Feel free to invite to it. And that group that we have for it will be open for a few weeks. The second thing is on June 17th, we'll do a coach sneak peek. And um, we haven't really ironed out the details this yet, but I think, you know, at least once a month, you have to have some sort of like coaching event. If you're actively trying to build a team, um, of course, like not everybody is actively trying to build a team. Sorry, somebody is um, asking me for the Zoom link. The next thing is on June 23rd, Salted Caramel Shakeology launches. I really don't like market stuff like that to brand new people as much, like it might go in my stories. But if you have customers, this is a good thing to keep in mind because you can always send an email out to all your customers, letting them know when it launches. Because it's a like limited edition launch, the pack should be, I think it's like a, I don't know how many packs. Is it 20 packs or something? 20 packets in a box. It only comes as like a box. Maybe I'm wrong about the number. Um, and it's usually like $75 or something like that. And there's a limit on how many people can buy, but existing customers, people who are already on Shakeology like to know about that. Coaches, of course, like to know about it. So that's another date to keep in mind. And then June 29th, we're going to start our, it's going to be really like a July challenge group, but it'll be the Muscle Burns Fat prep group. And if you haven't seen the Muscle Burns Fat um, like launch video yet, go look for it. It's just on YouTube. Um, it's going to be a really good program, especially for women who are a little bit scared of weights. The trainer for it's wonderful. She did Clean Week, which is on Beachbody On Demand. That's a little like beginner level. This is actually going to be much harder. There's going to be Muscle Burns Fat, then Muscle Burns Fat 2, I think. But anyways, it's a three-week program that's going to be followed up by another three-week program. That actually launches for coach purchase on July 7th and then for customer purchase on July 27th. So that should be the actual date that like you can access the workouts. So we will kind of call this group at the end of the month, like the prep group for it. And we should have a prep calendar of workouts if they want to do that. Otherwise they could always do like a round of 21 day fix or 21 day fix extreme. But these are kind of the things you want to keep in mind when you get started with your power hour, because you want to know what you're going to ask people to join you for. I think it's really hard to be in this business and ask people just to join you randomly. Like you kind of have to know, okay, I want to participate in that. I'm going to invite to that. You don't have to do these things. You can pick your own. Totally fine. Um, but it's definitely helpful to see like what's coming so you can kind of know how you want to plan for the month. So the first few minutes before like you even dive into your power hour, if you will, decide how much time you have to spend on your business that day. You know, if you don't actually have a full hour, you cut all these things down, of course, but you try to make sure you get it done. 
to like have something and to keep track of your invites or follow-ups with it might be paper maybe it's just a notepad on your phone something that kind of gives you the option to see and write down who you invited what you invited them to and then you can go back and you know follow up with them later three set your intentions and your timer like that's kind of just going back to like i'm going to focus on this group today or i'm going to focus on coaching invites today and then i think having a timer is really helpful um you can set the like timer on your phone and give yourself five minutes to use each thing or you know to hit each task um and then four is like get rid of all your other distractions don't respond to random messages until you get through this is why like a power hour can drag on you get a message back like great how are you and then you like veer off course to go back to that like you can do that at the end just send all your invites and get it done and then come back and spend as much time as you can you know to respond to those people so the first five minutes what we're going to do today is um make three to five stories where you share about what you're inviting to next if you're using stories for your business of course and um i think it's really helpful like if you don't have like the you know template stories that some of us use just go live really quickly and be like you know take a screenshot of the the training you're on be like i'm currently on a team training like learning about what's coming next really excited about this next challenge group we're going to have here's what it's going to contain blah 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 make three to five stories about that and then put some sort of call to action in there um maybe you put a poll at the very end maybe you talk for a couple slides and then you put some of the pre-made slides that we have like i know we have a couple floating around for the three-day refresh group we have some floating around just for like a summer strong like our general challenge group and then always put a poll at the end no matter what and then i said here if you've already posted in your stories today inviting something just make a post with like a call to action or make a post with some sort of you know motivation monday or progress pick or something like that it usually takes me a little longer than five minutes to put a post together, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't leave anyone out. So, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just hit mute on everyone. And then we'll spend the first five minutes doing this first step. So go ahead, guys.
Okay, cool. That was about five minutes there. Um, if you didn't get all your stories posted, just make a note to come back to it. But I think having, you know, your, your three to five, five to seven stories each day as you go throughout the day is really helpful for some of the other steps like growing your network like we talked about last week since you have to have content on your page for people to see. And I do think stories are a little more important than actually posting on your feed these days since more people look at those. Um, so make sure you have some content showing up on a daily basis in there. Next thing is grow your network. So we're going to pick Facebook or Instagram. It just depends on what you prefer to use and spend five minutes growing your network. And this is something that you can totally overthink and spend a ton of time on, but I don't want you to overthink it. I just want you to go in and add people. So on Facebook, if that's what you're going to use, add at least five new people, like look at your suggested friends list, go to your husband's page and add some of his friends. Go to your best friend's page, add some of her friends, or maybe you just find somebody that you really like and you look at who their friends list is. Chances are there's probably people you know um, that you can add. Or if you're on Instagram, add at least 20 new people if that's your platform of choice. And you can either look at your suggestions, you can go to like a friend's page again and see, you know, who is being responsive to their post. I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> And like, I try to pick people who are actually engaging with other people's posts that I'm following because I know they're active Instagram users. Or you can look at like an ad that's showing up in your feed, look at people who are um, like, have liked that ad because chances are you've been targeted for the same reasons. Um, there's so many places you can look or you go to like a local restaurant or like the local zoo or something like that. And just follow 20 new people. When they follow you back, that's when you can start engaging with them. So you don't have to overthink it when you're picking who to follow right now. So let's just spend five minutes and grow our network.
Okay, did you guys get five or 20? No. <laughs> so you're on mute, Jen. Sorry. I said my phone is driving me crazy. It's moving as slow as a turtle. And you, I just, what I just need. you can't do any. Like, but it's all right. Work. I'll get it done. Well, it took me forever to get the stories to do what I wanted them to do, but it's fine. I'll go back and add them. Yeah, so like the, the questions that come up the most when I do this type of training for people is like, do you track the people that you add? And I generally don't track them until I start like talking to them because I just think it's, I don't have a lot of time to do that. Um, so I don't write down just people that I go yeah. follow. I will say if you see people that you're like, that person is my person, I want to keep talking to them. Just add them to that collection thing that we talked about on Instagram or write them down somewhere. A lot of times what I do though is like, I look like these days I've been doing a lot of the ads and if they post stories, like if they have rings around their faces, I usually go to them first and I'll click on their stories real quick. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I want to follow her. And then once they follow me back is usually when I like introduce myself or, you know, maybe I watch their stories and show love or something like that. Um, so I wouldn't spend too much time on that and like worrying about if that person is somebody you're going to keep following or keep engaging with. It's just like, they look like your people, you know, like for me, it's like a fitness line that I was looking at that I keep getting ads for. And I just looked at people who liked the post because I like the clothes on that fitness line. So I feel like there's already some sort of commonality there. So I don't really like have to weed as many people out, I guess. If you guys have questions as we go to, feel free to like unmute yourself and ask. So I would just spend some time each day growing your network. I know the more time you spend on that, obviously the more you can grow, but I will say like just doing a little bit, if that's what you have is much better than leaving that out. Make sure you have content though on your page because when they follow you back, they're gonna wanna see some sort of content. Okay, next up, we're gonna make some new connections via Messenger and when I, I basically just start new conversations. It doesn't have to be brand new people in your life, but one thing I do pretty much on a daily basis if I'm sitting down to work my business is send happy birthday messages on Facebook if I'm over there. On Instagram, if I see I have new followers, I send like an intro message. And then otherwise, like I might go through people who like my posts and just be like, hey, you know, thanks for the support on my posts. I really appreciate it. As I'm working on myself, the support keeps me going. Are you interested in health and fitness too? Like on Instagram, that type of message is, is fine because you don't really know as many people that you're connected to over there. On Facebook, obviously that would be kind of a weird message to send to people. Um, but on Facebook, I think the best way to start new conversations each day is the happy birthday messages. And honestly, I just usually say to people like, you know, happy birthday to you today. Sorry, I'm a little late in the day. It's been, you know, a busy work day, but I wanted to make sure to acknowledge your birthday. Did you do anything fun to celebrate or something like that? Some people like through COVID or, you know, saying, you know, I'm sure it's an unusual quarantine birthday, but I hope you got to do something fun or whatever. Some people also that are coaches like just proactively send birthday messages for tomorrow's birthday. And they'll usually say like, I know your inbox is going to be flooded with messages tomorrow. So I just wanted to go ahead and say happy birthday to you. Do you have anything fun planned for your birthday? But that's a good way to start conversation. And honestly, I don't send that to men. Um, I just kind of focus on sending it to ladies because um, in general, like I want them to be the ones interacting with my posts more and seeing my stories. And so from there, what it usually does is it like notifies Facebook, like, oh, these two people are connected. They're conversing via messenger. I'm going to start showing that other person her posts or like, you know, it'll show that I have stories that are available to watch. So I think sending the messages over there is good. I, I typically do a mix of both. And then the introduction messages on Instagram, I covered this on um, last week's call. But usually I just would send like a message, like if I see somebody that started following me, that's like a legit person. I'd be like, hey, thanks for the follow. I'm Sarah. I live outside of Savannah. It's like a little bit about me. You know, I'm a full-time attorney and I'm also an online health and fitness coach. Mom of two with one on the way. You know, where do you live? Or like, tell me a little bit about you or I'm looking forward to connecting with you. It doesn't have to be anything complex and you can literally copy and paste it to every new follower that you get if you just kind of change it up for them. So we're going to spend five minutes doing that. Um, just pick whichever, you know, of those you want to do. And then, you know, the goal each day is probably to start like five to 10 new conversations. So I will start the timer now.
okay. Hopefully you got some connections out there. <clears throat> and just to let you know, like I send these birthday messages all the time, but I, I get like, you know, half of them respond, maybe saying thank you. And I'll literally go back and I'll see that last year I did it and they didn't respond and the last year they didn't respond, but I still just do it. I feel like people like to see like, you know, a message of acknowledgement in their inbox. So I don't really let silence deter me. Um, same thing on like Instagram, you know, I send the um, intro and I don't always get a response from the people, but like maybe they start watching my stories and I start watching theirs back. So don't take responses or lack thereof as like a personal thing. Each day, just try to make some new connections because what you're doing is obviously trying to like find your people and not everybody you reach out to will be your people. It's just, you know, it's a process. So the next thing we're going to talk about is showing like love or commenting on stories or pages of people who have been liking your posts or like showing up in your stories. So the like thing I want to say about this, cause we're going to do it for about 10 minutes and this is another way to build connections with people. Um, and, and maybe we'll actually just do it for five. Cause I just noticed we're kind of like running out of time quickly. Don't spend this time looking at what your coaches or coaches on the team are doing or challengers, like people you're already connected to. Spend it looking for like other people to connect with. So if you're on Instagram and you log in and you see your story, little dots at the top, scroll to the left a little bit because they're showing you the people that you watch frequently. And if the people you watch frequently are like people on your team or your coaches or your challengers, like that's great. You really should support them, but you need to make new connections too. Um, and if you're on Facebook, same thing with the stories, although not as many people use Facebook stories, or if you're not using Instagram as much, maybe you pick just one of your Facebook posts that had high engagement and you spend some time looking at the people that are liking your posts and you go show them love and we'll just do it for five minutes. But I think it's important because like the more engagement you're giving on Facebook or Instagram, the more engagement you're going to receive. So if you're watching stories of people like, you know, interact with them, engage with them, if they're posting pics of like their outfit or their kids or whatever, like feel free to respond on that. On the stories, you obviously have a couple little emojis you can send. I do that a lot. And sometimes it starts a conversation. Or if I see like recipes, I'll comment on their food. Um, and then on Facebook, a lot of it's more like family driven and stuff. So it's more spending time going to their page, looking at their most recent posts and engaging with that. So we'll just spend five minutes on that. Um, but this is something that we kind of have to do regularly to make more new connections with people, if you will. So we'll start now.
Okay, I was reading your comments, Jen. Um, yeah, so coaches obviously post a lot, but if you don't have a lot of other people who are posting to stories and you're using Instagram, you need to work on growing your network and growing with other people who are posting the stories, which is why I like when I kind of go to like, you know, the ad pages or influencer pages, I tend to follow more people that are already engaged. If you're going to like your local restaurant that you just visited and you want to find new people to connect with on there, you could do the same thing. Look for people that are actually commenting on the posts versus like just liking the page. Um, look for people that are already using stories and posting. Like in general, if I go to someone's Instagram page and they have no posts, I don't really have any incentive to follow them. So just work on growing your network. And I hear a lot of people say I don't have time to work the business, but then I see them comment on like half my stories or other coaches stories. And I'm like, you clearly have time. You're just putting it in the wrong place. Like my kind of mental rule is if it's been like three minutes and I'm just looking at my friend's stuff, I probably need to switch gears and do some actual work because you know, time is limited. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty common. And then you always have Facebook. Like if you're using Facebook or if you're even using your Instagram feed, just go look at one of your posts and see who liked it and start engaging with those people. Like they already are engaged on Instagram if they're, they're looking at your stuff. So there should be people to talk to. And I just try to spend a little time each day doing that because like it's it, I've honestly connected with new people that way. Like if we like the same things or if they post funny jokes and I comment back or whatever, it starts engagement that way. Now, this is the hardest part of the call. And I think we have about 18 minutes left. So we'll spend like eight minutes um, on this and then the next part. Sorry, let me look at the chat. Looking for new followers. Yeah, so uh, Tatiana, I think like that was the last call we did, like growing connections um, that I accidentally forgot to record. So I will talk to you about that separately after you look like I think you're going to watch some of the other videos today. So now we're going to spend some time inviting to our challenge group. And this is like, if you can't do anything else in a day, the invites have to happen and the follow ups have to happen. So that's like the last part of this call. This is what we call income producing activities, like posting on social media is good, engaging with people's good, starting new conversations is good. But if you don't have time for all that, like inviting kind of has to be your bare minimum because that's what's going to grow your business. And then following up, I think is really where most people end up saying yes versus the initial invite. So this is the last part of the call and it's where you should really spend the most time. If you are somebody who like needs to eat the frog, it's a book out there that says like you, you need to do the hardest thing first because you'll tend to put it off. Start with this part. Don't wait till the end. I just was showing you kind of like a progression of the way things can go. Um, but we'll spend a few minutes inviting to challenge groups. So I want you to either go to one of your stories where you posted a challenge group call to action, which is just like a poll or something like that, or go to a post where you've talked about like your workouts or you've talked about your nutrition and look to see who has liked those posts. And you're going to start by inviting them. Even if they didn't respond to a poll on Instagram stories or on Facebook stories, inviting them, if they've watched all your stories and you've seen them, like their name pop up several times, like it's still okay. You, sh you should still do it. And I'm just putting a sample invite here, but I put, thanks Christy for showing support on my post. It means so much to me. This is such a crazy time right now. You may have already found your workout group at home or maybe your gym is back open, but I wanted you to know that I'm hosting a fitness and nutrition summer strong group with a group of amazing ladies right now. I know we, we need community now more than ever, and I'd love to have you in ours. Want to learn more? Here's a tip. That's a really long invite. Type it out to yourself in Facebook Messenger. I always type myself notes in Facebook Messenger and hit send, and then just copy and paste it. Of course, it's not great to always copy and paste the same thing to everyone, um, but if you're short on time and you're going to look at like the last post you had that say had 25 likes, and you know you're going to invite five of those people or 10 of those people because they haven't been invited before, it will be a lot easier. Like you're saying, thank you specifically for like showing me love. I put on the second slide here, another sample invite. If you prefer not to invite to like the summer strong group that's open right now or the three day refresh group we have and you just want to like look towards the end of the month. Um, <laughs> what in the world? You know, I have to pick on you about the raise hand because you think it's funny. That oh, I do I was wondering, it. There's like a weird box that popped up first though. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, no, I was just going to add to what you last said before you went too far is the whole copy and pasting part. Normally what I'll do is I make sure I put their name, especially if like I know their name sometimes like Instagram, it won't say they're like, they don't have their name. And then I always will add, like look at really quickly, like 
one of the recent photos they've put and like make some kind of sentence to go with that. So it, they notice that I'm not just copy pasting a message and that I've actually like looked at their page and stuff like that. If, if that makes sense to y'all, like sometimes that's like a little touch that I'll add to my copy paste messages when I'm in a hurry. Yeah. Or like, even if you just look through their stories really quickly. Well, yeah. Um, one of, sorry. No, it's fine. It's like a, a whole method of inviting that Beachbody has done calls on before called the PB&J method. Um, yeah. For purposes of this call, I was trying to keep it easy because we're doing a power hour. Um, so the second potential invite, yeah. like obviously you change this to whatever fits you. It's not going to sound like some people are like, hey, babe, or hey, girl, or whatever. I'm not, I'm not really that like, you know, hey, girl type person so much. So I just try to say their name too, but I just put the second potential invite. Hey, Heather, just wanted to say thank you for following along with me through this craziness. We need all the connection we can get right now. So I appreciate it more than you know. I never want to leave anyone out. So I wanted to reach out because I'm starting an exclusive group this month for ladies who want to be the first to try out our brand new program called Muscle Burns Fat that releases in July. Want to learn more about joining in now to get prepared for it. You can change either of these up to be whatever you want, but I think just sending out like five to 10 invites a day is really key. So we're going to spend, let's just say like five minutes because we are running out of time pretty quickly and send out a couple of invites try for at least five pick pick a post and go to that or look at your story viewer list and invite from there and don't be pick, picky about it you guys like some people that you disregard in your mind might really be watching you because they're actually interested in what you're doing
Okay, sorry guys, we're rushing a little bit, but I know people want to stay within the hour. Just take like a screenshot of these invites if you want to come back and use them. Um, or like I said, if you send one out, you can always send it to yourself in Facebook Messenger and save it for later. Uh, the next thing, and we'll just keep this like five minutes and done, is inviting to coaching. And I know this is going to freak people out, especially if you've never done it before. Um, but I think this is something you have to do a little bit of every day. I think that the number one thing that most coaches don't do is share about coaching and invite to coaching. And then they wonder why it takes so long to grow the income and really the income growth mostly happens with team growth with Beachbody. So I think leading with the business opportunity a lot of times is needed, especially if you want to see that growth happen. And it's just, for some of us, for me, it's more fun. Like when I have working coaches who actually want to grow the business side together, like that's kind of where I get like more excited about things. Um, so, you know, it might appeal to you more than the actual like hosting challenge groups and um, building up challenger side. So what we're going to do is spend just like, let's do say like five to six minutes um, inviting to coaching. And a couple options are one, if you already have customers or rockstar challengers in our groups, send them a voice message. And I think voice messaging for coaching is really great because you're like obviously personalizing it and thank them for being a leader in your group or for encouraging others and just say, Hey, have you ever thought about coaching too? I think it's something that you could be really great at. Not every challenger is cut out to be a coach, but some just step up right away. I think the BOD groups app is not helping and showing us who a rock star is, but I still always ask people that are challengers, would you want to sign up as a coach or have you ever thought about doing this to help other people? Because I do think that sometimes it's in the back of people's heads and you have to ask them to kind of nudge them. So if you have challengers, now is a great time to do that, especially if we're having like a coach info group next week. Or then the second option is find some people on social media who inspire you and send them a message asking if they have ever thought about doing what you do. Sorry, there's a typo. Um, of course, if you haven't really been posting a lot, you don't have these people. A good place to start is if you've posted at all about coaching, you can go back to that post and see who responded to it, liked it, whatever, and just be like, thanks for the love of my coaching post. It's kind of awkward putting myself out there at first, but I appreciate it. Have you ever thought about coaching too? And just get the conversation rolling. You don't have to have the perfect answer after. There's a really good info video in our team page that you can send next. But asking the question of planting the seed, I think, is really important. So let's just spend five minutes and send out, like, shoot for three coaching invites in that time. And if you're newer and you haven't actually hit Emerald Jet or added, like, you know, people close to you and you haven't, like, been posting a lot, you know, if there's people in your life that you want to join you in like a challenge group or as a coach on your team, now's the time to ask them to.
Okay, almost done, sorry. The last thing I just wanted to say, and we can do this whenever we get off, we can end the call first, but um, the, one of the most important things that has helped me grow my business more than anything, hands down, is following up with people. I can't even tell you how many people have tried to offer me something and I've thought about it. And in my mind, I've thought, if they asked me again, I probably would say yes, but they just never come back. And it's not because I'm like wishy-washy, just sometimes like, you know, I have a challenger who asked me about essential oils like six months ago. And I was like, maybe I'd try them if like somebody told me like what to do with them. And she just ne has never followed up with me. And in the back of my mind, I kind of think about her. Then I have like somebody else who is a Rodan and Fields girl that I used to buy the, uh, lash boost from and she just never checks in on me so I kind of quit buying it and just you know like it's a customer service thing right and I am sure there are people in your life if you've asked them to join you at this are they in the exact same boat like this maybe isn't a priority but if you ask them enough like they'll watch you a little bit they'll start to gain trust like with what you're doing and they'll eventually be ready to say yes I think the average like asking is like seven times and I can honestly say it gets frustrating it gets exhausting you might not want to do it, but this is such a huge thing. Like, I don't know what is happening with my computer, you guys. Sorry. <coughs> so follow-ups, I think, are something that have to be done on a regular basis. And when you're in a month like this where um, everything is on sale, we just came off of a summer sale group, we have a couple groups coming up, like, you have to follow up with people. So don't leave anyone behind, promise. Like, if somebody tells me stuff like leave me alone, I leave them alone. But otherwise I typically will follow up. It's just, I go from like every month follow up to maybe every six months or every three months. And I kind of have like a little tracking system for that, but you have to make sure you're following up with people. So for the last few minutes and we'll get off the call and you guys can do this on your own, but 